Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is BGFH, and I am back for another iOS game video, accessible iOS game video, actually. And I'm not exactly sure what to call this game. Um, <clears throat> the icon says Heathcote. <laughs> Weird name. And I'll have the voiceover spell that for you. Heathcote. Double tap to open. Act containers. Uh, Heathcote. Headings. Actions. Characters. Cap H E. So yeah, I'm not sure. I saw this game originally on AppleViz, um, but it had a really strange name. It was it was actually spelled something really weird. So you know, I'll put a link to the game in you know the iTunes link into the video description down below, so you guys can find it <clears throat> because I've actually heard it. it. I just started the game, haven't played it at all, but even just on the headphone screen that it comes up with right away. They have two different spellings of the game, and then it was spelled all goofy in the AppleViz post and on the, on the store. I don't know, but uh, Heathcote or something, maybe we will find out exactly the reasoning behind the name when we play it here. But let's Heathcote. jump in. This is a self-voicing, I think, choose-your-own-adventure style thing. When I read the AppleViz description, it sounded kind of interesting as far as like story and stuff like that i don't know anything about it though uh we're just going to go into this fresh uh, i have never seen it never played it so let's find out what this sucker is all about so this is as far as i've gotten basically which we do have headphones it's just uh uh over airplay Next page. So we're going to go next. next page. For the most immersive experience, try playing with your eyes closed. Not a problem. Next page. Button. So play with your eyes closed for best next experience, page. sure. Control the story by swiping, not tapping. Okay, you swipe, not tap. Okay, and it shows uh, in the upper part of the screen, there's like it's showing up, left and right, up, left, down, right, whatever. Next page. Button. Next page. Cover it. Okay. Voice over off. Oh, wait. I was going to say, presumably... Voice over off. Key Credits. Button. Credits. More. Button. Start story. Double tap to start story. Double tap to enter story mode. Okay, let's double tap to enter story mode. We hear some audio there. Starts alert. The control system during the story will be different from voiceover. Okay. So we get a dialogue. The story will be different from, or the controls will be different from voiceover. The story will be controlled only by swiping left, right, up, and down. You can hear descriptions of those dimensions by swiping with two fingers. You can hear a description of the current state by tapping with two fingers. Okay, so you just swipe up, down, left, or right <clears throat> if you want to hear what they, uh, what each swipe direction does. You can swipe that direction into with two fingers. And you can tap two fingers to hear the current state. What did it say? Okay, hear the uh, the description of the current state by tapping two, two fingers. And the reason I'm kind of repeating this is, again, we're doing this kind of gorilla style, uh, holding the voiceover up to the microphone just because that's what I have to do. And... Um, the game audio, thankfully, will go through the headset because it's going to be all self-voiced. So I'm thinking pretty soon we're actually going to be able to turn voiceover off, if I had to guess correctly. Enter story. Button. All right, enter story. Story mode. And I'm going to turn voiceover off. You've reached Martin Fellows of Spectre Productions. Please leave a message after the beep. Martin, I'm here. Man. Okay, so. Hey, waiting on you. So if I swipe up with two fingers. Come on, man, pick up. Oh, do I have to turn voiceover back on? Hold on. Voiceover on. Key code. Swipe. Story. Story. Better end of scene. be there. Story is at end of scene. Do open actions menu if available. Oh, this is ridiculous. Landline. Swipe up to select. Oh, okay. So I swipe up. Landline. Landline. 
time you picked up. Hey, David. You there already? Yeah, just pulled up. How's it look? Dilapidated, man. Not a whole lot to look at from the outside. Just a big, rundown building. Hey, call my cell. I don't have the recorder soaked up to my landline. All right. Hey. Yo. You gotta get the signal? I hear you loud and clear. Ready? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Well, I got the plans laid out in front of me. Ready when you are. Oh, <laughs> Will say you had family over. Email alert, smartass. You nearly there? Uh, yeah. Still heading down the path. Give me a minute. Okay. Email. Where are you? Email. Now let's see what email we got. Huh. Oh, the station sent along the commercial. Hooray. Coming in December to 108.2 Eagle FM, your favorite spook detective, David Scott, in a brand new holiday special. The Pines of East Coast L. On Christmas Day, 1956, the Heathcote Asylum for the Criminally Insane was the scene of a gruesome tragedy. <laughs> Firefighters so cheesy. and police arrived on the scene to find one wing of the building on fire. No one survived. Heathcote Asylum is now known as a hotspot for supernatural activity. David Scott will go in and face its wrath. <laughs> Only on 108.2 Eagle FM. All right, then. Oh, jeez, okay. Uh, it's really not that bad. It's crap, Martin. It's like the trailer for a freaking Corman picture. Total schlock. Look, we can send them back notes and see if they have time to change it before it goes to air. Oh, do their jobs for them, you mean. <laughs> all right, you clearly got all the answers, so how would you do an ad for this show? Where do I start? Okay, here's an idea. We start with the details. On Christmas Day, 1956, all 89 residents of the Heathcote Asylum for the Criminally Insane were burned to death. Uh, still sounds pretty cheeseball to me. Look, it's not like there's a science to advertising a paranormal investigator show on the radio. The guys we were with on TV, sure. They knew how to push a show like this, but... I've gone from television to radio. This rate, by next year, I'll be standing at a freeway exit holding a sign that says, We'll hunt ghosts for food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'll be right there with you holding one that says, Reality TV producer for hire. <laughs> yeah, okay, well... Uh, yeah. Really, though, what would you do? Well, it's got to play with what people are afraid of. Like, what are you most afraid of? Okay, so that thunder, that kind of booming sound, I think means that I can do something. Clowns. Uh, clowns. What was the question? Darkness. Spiders. Clowns. Uh, we'll say spiders. Spiders. You know that already. Spiders, man. Exactly. So why didn't they have the sound of spiders? Well, come on. Dude, not everyone's afraid of them. And how in the hell do you hear them? Okay, bad example. I know a lot Almost of people... Almost there? Yeah, getting to the door. I know a lot of people are afraid of anyway, clowns, Anyway, the but... principle of the thing. I'm afraid of the dark, but... You're afraid of the dark? Yeah, and... Damn. Rain? Nuclear apocalypse, actually. Yeah, of course rain. <laughs> Came out of nowhere, too. Sky was pretty clear on the drive up. Crap, hold on. My phone's getting wet. Should have stayed in L.A. Okay. I'm here. You need to work out more, man. Oh, <clears throat> funny guy. <laughs> anyway, I'm opening the door. Let's hope the owner wasn't right. What do you mean? When he gave me the keys, he went all crazy Ralph on me. Crazy Ralph? What does that mean? Crazy Ralph? Yeah, exactly. Where are you? Afraid of the dark? Go in. Crazy Ralph? Yeah, what does that mean? I'm... Who the hell is Crazy Ralph? Oh, 
come on, you know. You're doomed. You're all doomed. Don't I know, let wreck it know it, Ralph. you're afraid. If it senses fear, it'll feed on it. You're doomed. <laughs> uh. Ah, quit your whining and get in there. You love those crazy old coots trying to ward you off. Okay, let's see what else we can do. So, yeah, this seems you just uh, hit, you swipe up. Go in. Uh, we don't want to go in yet. Where are you? So. Afraid of the dark? Yeah, let's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll uh, he'll, he'll probably make fun of him for being afraid of the dark, but let's afraid see what he does. Did I hear you right earlier? You're afraid of the dark? Yeah, why? Well, you're at an asylum on your own at night. And you decide to spring this on me tonight? After 15 years of you working in dark places? Shouldn't you be doing my job? Sitting at home, relaxing, looking at building plans. Gotta earn a living, man. No point letting fear ruin my livelihood. You are a braver man than I. Or a stupider one. Probably option number two. Anyway, hmm. I'm ready. Okay. Go in. Sure, uh, we don't need to ask where he is, because obviously we know that he's in front of the front door. Any last words? The <laughs> dark's gonna get you. Martin. So may as well. I freaking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheesy, okay. but in a good way. I'm walking in through the front door, and... Whoa! What? This seems way bigger on the inside. Plans say that there are two doors... The one to your left leads to the offices, cells, doctor's office, and the east wing. The other door on your right leads to the basement and kitchen. Okay. Creepy dark room. Check. Rats. Check. Storm. Check. All we need is to find an old book bound in flesh and we'll have the full Monty here. Working electricity? Hold on. Yes. Yeah? No, nah, man. I'm D kidding. This place is dead. Good thing I got my flashlight. Okay. Kind of tempted to turn this into like a October Let's Play. Basement and kitchens. Just because it's an accessible game, and I'm kind of curious, and... Basement yeah. and kitchens. Um. Offices and office cells. Left. Rats. Where are you? Rats. Let's talk about the rats. Get some sounds of those rats for me, will ya? Sure. Ah, jeez, they're big suckers. Wonder what they're eating around here. The flesh like of the visitors, insane. Okay. Basement and kitchens. Uh... Basement seems like one of those things that you go to later, so let's go... Offices and cells. Office seems pretty good idea. Okay, so, uh, why don't you start your spiel? Let's get as much audio as we can of you first entering. Okay. And don't worry, I can cut it all together later. No need to do the presenter stuff. No, it's gotta be right. Gotta be genuine, my man. Fine, have your stupid scruples. Start whenever you want. I am now in the foyer of the former Heathcote Asylum. The fire didn't reach this far. In all, it seems like a normal, derelict building of its time. The okay. windows are thick with grime from decades of neglect. Upon entering, I heard some rats. But what could they be eating in a place like this? Moss grows on some of the windowsills, so life is continuing even in this desolate place. I have a feeling, though, that this place doesn't want us here. Then Martin, here's when you'll cut in the door slam. Oh, thought it had to be genuine. Well, we do our best to be genuine, but we're not freaking saints here, man. So now it sounds like we transitioned. The owner of the property refuses to rebuild here, just letting it sit vacant. When I questioned him about it, he would not tell me why. I presume it would be expensive to do anything with it, and this whole area is so remote, there are probably few buyers, especially with the tragedy that happened here. How are we doing so far? Loud and clear? 
Okay, yeah. So now, like he, tra I like the way they did the transition to it. Sounded almost like you know, oh, that was the actual um, dialogue of stuff. Uh, you know, they don't sound like they're on the phone anymore. So let's swipe up. Keep recording. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep recording. Hmm. Where are you? Cell phone. What is cell phone? I wonder what that means. How's your phone? Battery still good? Yeah. Yeah, it's full. We'll be fine. Okay. So let's tell him to keep going. Keep recording. Your levels are fine. Keep going. Cool. Cool. I am now in what looks to be an office. There are a couple of old typewriters covered in dust and rusting. The rain from outside is streaming in through cracks in the ceiling. There is some graffiti on the wall here. Duh. Really? When nature calls, <laughs> get back to your desk. I wondered what that okay, noise okay. was. I thought it was the water. How can you say it again? He's You're taking ass, a leak. You know that? <laughs> anyway. That's great. There's some graffiti here, barely readable, and a couple of doors leading out. Martin, do you know where they go? Oh, uh, it says here one leads to the cells, one leads to the offices, and there should also be an entrance to the east wing. Yeah, sounds about right. Alrighty, so I think we are going to go, uh, the offices seem like a good place to start because they might have, like, you know, master keys and stuff, like, for the staff work there, so we might be able to find some stuff that we may be able to use for the different wings and that, and that. Where are you? Typewriters. Oh, yeah, okay, let's see, uh, sure. Anything interesting with the typewriters? They're kind of cool. Probably be worth something if they weren't so wrecked. Maybe turn off the alerts? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, waiting for one of our invoices to be approved. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> Wilhelm screen is your nope. alert. That's actually pretty Bam. good. Just a bunch of random letters. That's weird. Sure, Martin, sure. A lot of men have erectile dysfunction. Get back to work. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, let's keep going. Graffiti. And I have no idea how long this game is, so we're just going to play for a while. Can you make out the graffiti? It's barely readable. What the? It says... It's difficult to read. I can smell... Uh, burning... Hair. I can smell burning hair. Jesus. That's weird. Yeah. Is that related to the fire? I can't imagine it would have been very easy to write well on fire. What's it written in? Spray paint? Don't think so. Let me take a closer look. No, Blood. it's something brown and... Oh, fuck. I think it's written in feces. Jesus. Oh. Really? You sure? No. I mean, it's brown and it's starting to chip off. It really looks like... Maybe it's dried blood? Whatever it is, it's... Wait. There's more graffiti on the other wall. Same thing. This wall says, I can smell burning hair over and over. Maybe two, three dozen times. Looks like it was written in a hurry, too. The letters are overlapping. Not gonna lie, this is pretty eerie. Alrighty. East Wing. Where are you? Cell phone. Offices. Let's go to the offices. Okay. I'm going to go to the offices. It leads to... Well, nothing. An empty room. Except for a painting on the wall. Remove the painting. There's always huh. a secret pa a safe or something. What? There's no furniture. But there's still marks on the floor where the furniture was. Looks like it was moved recently. Think it was Crazy Ralph moving some stuff around? Maybe. But he told me he never actually comes in here. Painting. Oh, yeah, let's go into the painting. Alright, they took the furniture but left a painting. What's it of? 
It's just a painting of the silence foyer back in the day. It's got some kind of moss or mold growing on it, where the east wing would be. Have a look behind it. Scrape off the mold. Yuck. Behind the painting. Exactly, see? I don't know. Some people hide wall safes behind paintings. Told you. Sherlock Holmes, maybe. What you hoping for? Find a secret stash of that sweet, sweet mental asylum money? <laughs> I wouldn't complain if we did. All right, man. I'm checking. See? He knows what's up. Nope. Just a wall. Crap! Uh... Did you break it? Yeah. Gotta be more careful, David. What if our creepy asylum privileges get revoked? Okay. Oh, uh, no, see, he knew he... That was the first thing I thought of, too. It was like, oh, everything is gone but a painting. Of course you gotta look behind it. I'm still not convinced that there's maybe something. Maybe you gotta turn it or, you know, twist it or something. Keep walking. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep walking. Yeah, we'll keep walking. I think I might try to turn okay. this into a Let's Play. Okay, seems like a doctor's office. Just a desk and a chair, some degrees on the wall. Hmm. All the names are scratched out on the certificates. You can't read it? No. But someone has scratched something into the wall underneath one of the certificates. Yeah? Just says, monster. <laughs> okay. So a no-name monster doctor. Is there a nameplate on the desk? No, but there's a book. Seems like a notebook. Entry dated December 19th, 1956. Patient 3538, Joe Banks. Patient believes that a demon has taken up residence in Heathcote, complaining of claws scraping the bone of his skull to access his thoughts. His paranoid schizophrenia leads me to surmise that the medication must be altered or changed radically. We'll put him forward for invasive treatment. I have not seen a case like this since back in the fatherland. Blah, blah, blah. Last entry is on December 24th, day before the fire. Christmas Patient Eve. 3538's treatment was a success. His terror has been removed and offered. His prognosis is good, but his demeanor is now just one of desperation. He is telling other inmates to flee. We cannot have this. His shell may be still utilized. Tomorrow we shall look to increase his medication. Wait, did you say offered? Yeah. The hell? I don't know. Could be the owner planning this stuff around here to lend credibility to his story. You think so? Honestly, no, I don't. But it wouldn't be the first time something like this has been pulled on us, man. Okay, let's see what we can do now. Notebook. Hmm. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep walking. Notebook. We'll do look at the notebook one more time. Entry dated December 19th, 1956. Patient 353. Patient 3538. Chow Banks. Patient believes that a demon has taken up residence in huh. Heathcote. You can tell it's the same voice actor. Complaining of claws scraping the bone of his skull to access his thoughts. But doing accent. His paranoid schizophrenia leads me to surmise that the medication must be altered or changed radically. We've put him forward for invasive treatment. Have you not seen a case like this since back, back in the, the fatherland? Last entry is on December 24th, day before the fire. Patient 3538's treatment was, was a success. success. His terror, he's been removed and offered. His prognosis is good. But his demeanor is now just one of desperation. Yeah, He's same telling other inmates to flee. Stuff just acted differently. They cannot have this. His shell may be still utilized. Tomorrow we shall look to increase his medication. All right. Notebook. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep walking. Keep walking. 
We are in what is clearly the examination room. There's a big metal table in the center of the room with leather arm and leg straps on it. Stirrups as well. Okay. This is grim, man. It's caked with rust, and it looks like the rats have eaten bits of the straps away. Oh, wow. What is it? There's a small shelving unit on the wall. It's a... a shrine or something. Old candles all around it, half melted. There's a stone statue of Christ in the middle. Anything unusual about it? Other than the fact that there's a shrine in an examination room? No. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm kind of waiting to see if there's, like, I don't know if there's going to be light puzzle solving or if there's going to be, like, some kind of reflexive, like, ref uh, reflection, not reflection, um, but, like, you know, reflexes where you have to, like, react to things. Where are you? Shrine. Keep walking. Shrine. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep walking. Cell phone. Keep walking. Shrine. Yeah, we'll look at the shrine. Why don't you take a look at that shrine? Yeah, all right. Okay, that's pretty weird. Looks as though someone chipped Jesus' face off. It's like they tried to recarve it. I can't tell what it's supposed to be, though. Huh. There's something jammed in one of the grooves. I'm pulling Puzzle. it out. Oh, Christ! What? What is it? It's a fingernail. Like it was pulled out at the root. Ow. I think someone scratched the face out with their nails. Ouch. Yeah. Alrighty. Keep walking. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep walking. Sure, keep walking. Well, onward and upwards. What's next? Any other doors? Just a hallway. A really long one. Mm, no doors. No windows. If it wasn't for the flashlight, I would be walking blind. Nothing here. God knows where this ends up. Boo! There's more graffiti <laughs> on the walls here. Alright. What's it say? Uh, it's damn weird. Everything burnt away. Cobwebs and empty eye sockets. What? Paging Mrs. Bates. Ugh, yeah. Oh god, I hate that scene. Come on, you're, you're kidding, right? doesn't really say that. I'm serious. Okay. I'm coming up to a corner. Oh, wait. At the end of the hall, I can see... Wait. Oh, should be in the foyer. Yeah, I can see it through the glass in the door ahead. All right. Head there. That's the best way to get to the other part of the building, the cells, and the east wing. I hear ya. Okay. Okay, here in the running, foyer. Or dripping water. The foyer, okay. <clears throat> I think we'll go a little bit longer. And, you know, I might just turn this into a, uh, you know, October horror themed let's play because why not? I'm kind of curious to where the story is going to go. And I don't know if there's any variations in the story like if you can get di I've kind of heard that you can possibly get different endings um but we'll see so let's swipe up east wing where are you cell phone offices cells east wing uh swipe up to select where are you cell phone offices cells let's go to the cells Checking out the cells now. Leads into a hallway. And here we are. Jeez. It's a long damn hallway. Just gonna talk some for more atmosphere. Sounds good. This hallway heads towards the main complex, which was destroyed by the fire that killed all the inhabitants of this asylum. It is said after they died, the spirits of the insane walked back to their cells and stayed there. Some say even their souls were too mentally ill to be granted residence in the afterlife. Who said that? 
I'm being dramatic, man. Uh. We've got a show to record, remember? Fine, but... Jesus, another? Oh, what is it with the door? David, you there? David. Ugh, oh, damn. Okay, so apparently we lost call. Landline. Cell phone. Landline. Oh, boy. So do I call him on the landline or... Landline. Cell phone. Do the cell. Ugh, come on, David. Because remember early on he said something, I forget. David Scott. I can't make it to the phone he right couldn't now, so do something well on the landline. I forget what it was. <laughs> uh, sorry, I dropped the phone. Thought the dark got you. Funny guy. Where are you now? A hallway. I think it leads into the east wing. What's with all the banging? Wind slamming the cell doors. Well, glad you're alive. Alive to die another day, my man. Okay, ready when you are. Okay, uh, let's find out what we can do here. Well, maybe we'll go through the cells here, and then when it gives us another choice, uh, we'll probably wrap up the video and we'll start, start another recording. one. Where are you? Start recording. Where are you? Cell phone. Start recording. Cell phone. Let's see. How's your phone? Battery still good? Yeah. Yeah, it's full. We'll be fine. Okay. Start recording. Sure. Okay. So I am here in cell block C. I think this is where the mid-level patients were held. Those with severe, but not criminal, mental issues. The wall at the end of the hallway is open to the elements. I can see the remains of the east wing past it. The place where 89 people lost their lives. From outside, the vines are growing inwards, coating this hallway in its wooden tendrils. It's amazing. I've seen haunted houses, haunted ships, and many hospitals, but this is the only one where it seems nature is taking over. Jesus, you would hate it here. Why? Let's just say the walls, they're more spiders than walls. Come on. I'll save them for you. Just keep recording. <clears throat> it has been decades since Heathcote's last residence and the only sound, the wind. It almost seems as if the wind is this asylum. Yeah, and a lot of banging. Ghost. <clears throat> I, okay, this place just managed to unnerve me. For, for those at home, all the doors just slam shut at once. Not one is left open. The wind is also gone. <sighs> Damn. You okay? Yeah. That was... Okay, not sure okay. what that noise was. One of the doors just opened on its own. That was... Pretty damn creepy. So, we can go into that door and probably get locked in and, I don't know, something's gonna come kill us or something, I don't know. Let's find out. Keep walking. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep walking. Well, we'll keep walking. Have a look in there. Really? It's what you're there for. Huh. Oh, fine. I've never actually watched one of those, So like, I'm ghost standing in an shows. empty, damp hall. Clearly a place used for the more difficult patients. It's lined with cells with small, round windows. I can't imagine this place was ever hospitable. Can you open any of them? Um, just one. Seems when the doors close, they lock. But some junk kept this one from closing. It's a dead body. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so let's, uh... Close cell. Open cell. Cell phone. Where are you? Close cell. Open cell. Let's open them. It's a small cell. Empty except for a bookshelf. 
I'm gonna check it out. No, 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 no. Hell no. What if you get locked in? That's exactly. Then send the police. Anyway, I'll keep it open with this brick. Okay, fine. Just as long as you're sure. Hmm. There are a few mystery books. A Bible. Oh. This one says journal. Inmate 3538. Joe Banks. It looks like insane ramblings. The demon lives here. I can hear its claws scraping to get into my mind. Please someone help me. Yeesh. Okay. Journal. Um I could do journal. the journal more. Where are you? Cell phone. Head back. Journal. I guess we could look at the journal. Inmate 3538. it will probably do another Joe voice Banks. again. The, the demon, demon lives here. I can hear its claw scraping to get into my mind. Please, someone help me. The doctor says I need the treatment to stop the voices. I can't trust, trust him. He is one of them. Oh. Seems something happened. The handwriting goes from scrawls to being normal cursive. Last scrawl says, The demon has won. I cannot stop what will happen. I am so scared. And then there's one paragraph, I think. Last entry, dated 24th December 1956, the day before the fire. I sit here in my 43rd year on this earth. For the first time, I am sincerely alone. My voice is silenced. My fear has been bled out of me and fed to it, taken from me. For the first time in my life, I have a rational mind. I see now what is happening. Something is hungry. Something is living here. It feeds on fear. Not just my fear. Everyone's. It's eating their insanity. I cannot let this continue. I will stop this. I sacrifice, I sacrifice myself and the lives of us all to stop this. Ooh, damn. Did you just find a confession? I... I don't know. Is that all it says? No, there's... there's more. Wow, there's a lot in this journal, because I looked. This, I, I hope, hope I, I was successful. successful. If it was, and you are in this place, run. If you stay here, it can take form. Please, for the sake of your life, run. Run now. Run now. Wow. Okay. You know, I was going to wait until the end of the uh, the cells area, but with that kind of, you know, ominous warning, that might actually be a place to stop. So, we'll wrap this part up here. Um, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. Hope you guys are enjoying this one, and I'll be back in part two soon. So, see you guys in the next, in the next one.